welcome day six. It's over 100 degrees. I am sick with some type of cold, and yet the work must get done. And yes, this is the background noise a lot of times. Some job was being done elsewhere that required the compressor. And yeah, inside of a metal building, it just gets very loud. So sometimes I like to wear earplugs. What I'm doing right here is getting my fishing pole. That is not a product placement for Liquid Death. I think it's overpriced water, but good on them for their branding and marketing. I am measuring how far I have to go through the wing to get our sender wires and the nav light wires and the strobe sync wire through the front leading edge of the airfoil into the flight deck to then go to the monitors and everything else. So today is basically just messing with this all day long while Anthony is preparing the fuel tanks for their new sender lines that are gonna take the pumped fuel from the wingtip tanks into the main tanks when you turn that on inside the cockpit. And he'll be also gluing that up with some of that disgusting chemical nastiness tank sealant. And I'll look up what it's called again because it has been a year since I actually did this install. I'm just catching up. Let's begin. So this isn't in the order that it happened, but this is Anthony prepping for the tank install for the inlet and just showing you what it looks like inside these tanks. Not a lot of room, quite a difficult place to be hanging out in, adjusting and trying to see what you're doing. So obviously he's a professional. We just finished drilling out that side. You'll see this right tank is getting its um, step drill for creating the proper size so it's not too big and not too small to send that line through. So there's a view of it getting drilled from the other side. That's the step drill, the pneumatic drill. That's what it sounds like. Really fun echo. So now that's drilled and cleaned out and vacuumed out, then Anthony is taking the pneumatic press this on the out. Flame Master chem sealant, and sticking out on like the end that. of the washer. Kind of squishing in there so it splooges and around. In here so I can throw some sealant on Not a lot of room. The things are quite large. I think they'd make kind of a half size length of this tube. Then he squeezes it to apply the chem sealant, Flame Master. And you can't always get around everywhere you want. So his trick is get as much as you can and then apply the washer and then rotate it around. And that should spread enough between this side, the other side, and then now putting on the top nut, tightening that down, finger tight, then gonna be applying by finger some of the chem sealant after he applies first a bead of it, then he'll just push that around with his finger, finish off then with a brush coat of it to really make sure it is sealed because no one likes fuel leaks. So there it is, getting all smooshed up. Of course, wear gloves because this stuff sticks to everything and is disgusting. Checking it out, seeing how it looks. This is the view from the iPhone, all glopped on. So that's inside the tank. So that's what the tip tanks will send the fuel into once you turn on the pumps that will suck the fuel out. So there he is now finishing some applications, just really making sure it's painted and coated around the structure. You want to make sure it's a really good seal and don't want to have to come back and do this again. So there I am putting in that end while he is applying it in the other tank. So this is just another view, kind of condensing all those steps. Now he's tightening it on. I'm holding it on the backside just to hold it. And that's what we're gonna tie in from the other tanks. All right, now comes the fun of fishing cables and wires from the tip tanks into the flight deck or cockpit. And I built the fly rod. The challenge is having it match up to the holes that are available for sending the unit through. 
and it's a real challenge. These are the fiberglass poles that screw together. The tolerances were pretty tight and trying to reach through the access ports to find and grab onto the fishing pole was so gnarly and definitely a workout. My hands would drip with sweat trying to get it in and be so happy once I finally hit the hole and pass it through. Here I am just measuring how much more I've got to go before I can reach via the inspection ports underneath the leading edge. Finally got it. Now we can tie a string, loop that through, and the string will act as our ability to then pull the sender wires and the sync strobe light and the nav light units that we need into the flight deck. Now I'm on the other wing. Thankfully, I have the interruption of the leading edge with the landing and taxi lights. So I only have to go a certain distance and I'm able to fish that pole through a lot easier than that long run. So now again, just fishing back the sink wire because I had to send it from the other side and it's one continuous line that I wanted to do. So I'm going back and I'm gonna meet up with the fishing pole and have that pulled through. And just making that all happen right here. Again, just want to be careful that when you're pulling through the cable, you're not cutting the lines. Here I am inside the cockpit, pulling it through and setting it up. And I'm tying it off, be able to make sure that it goes through securely without losing it as I pull it through. Make sure it's all set. Cool. Zoop. There we go. Now I got the rest of the line so I can be able to pull back through the sender line then and then I can manually hand pass through the rest of the inspection ports, the cable. And you just wanna take your time with it. You don't wanna rush. Here I am setting up for some protection spaces inside around the holes before it enters into the cabin. You gotta make sure that any sharp edge where vibration or rubbing happens doesn't chafe through the wire and then end up causing a cut. The stuff is nasty, nasty glue. So gross. So many carcinogenic things in aviation. So finish that. Now I'm working on passing everything through nice and smooth, make sure all the slacks pulled out, having just enough, measure 500 times before cutting once. That's the center line now is matched up and basically what you're going to be doing is making sure that it's with the bundle of the existing wires this is cable wrap i wrap this around again for the chafing factor this is going to go around some turns be in front of some sharp edges that you want to protect so i just slide that on cut it to length and that'll be all set for when we install the tip tanks later got that dialed in here it is there's some wrap that you can see how it's dialed in and that is going up through a section where it was going to chafe. And lastly, I just want to show you what it was like doing things with one hand, having lights fall down, trying to get the shot. I was impressed with how much time I had spent with zip ties before that it was pretty easy to do them one handed. So the one handed technique, passing it through the zip tie holder that Cessna installed when they first built the plane. So just trying to reuse what I already have snugging things up, moving that existing zip tie out of the way for the bundle, putting that one in, and then pulling to pull down that slack on that sink line, I believe is for the strobe. Got my other finger in there, do need another finger just to set it up and then you can pull it through and tighten it down. And you don't want it crazy tight, but enough where rubbing and chafing and Hopefully no drilling through lines later if you ever have to do any other installs where you blindly drill into things. So here I am installing another zip tie plate just because I wanted to make sure it was secure over there before it passes through the grommet in the sheet metal. And then using these clippers, these are from Harbor Freight. They're amazing. The best zip tie clippers ever. Highly recommend you find them and buy them. They are cheap and nothing beats them. Not even snap-ons, no one. Rock on.